you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T, and today we have a tutorial on a class of uh, functions or relationships called variations. Uh, we're going to, to begin our explore, exploration of variations using a common formula I call the DIRT formula. Distance equals rate times time. This is a formula we use all the time when we're traveling on vacations, for example. So let's look at our first scenario. And in this scenario, we're traveling, traveling on a long stretch of highway, and we're driving at this constant rate of 70 miles per hour. And we want to explore the relationship between time that we're driving and the distance traveled. So we can put 70 in for the rate and have our function here. Now we know from Algebra 1 that this is a linear equation, and we're going to see here. But let's just go ahead and plug in some numbers. So if we travel for one hour, then we would have traveled 70 times 1, or 70 miles. So this is in hours. This was in miles per hour, so this is miles. If we travel two hours, we would go 140 miles. Three hours, 210. Four hours, 280. And if we traveled no time, we would be going no distance. So if we plot those points on a scatter plot, we've got this is our uh, distance, and this is our time. So 0, we've got 1 and 70. This is 50, 75, so about here. 2 hours, 100, 125, about here. Uh, 3 hours, 210, 200, so we're right around here. And 4 hours would be 280, which is right around here. And we could see that those numbers are arranged in a line, and we could draw a line of best fit through those lines. And let's see if I can get it through there approximately. So we've got there. I didn't quite hit it. Let's see if we can line that up a little bit. My slope's a little off, but you get the point that they're arranged in a linear fashion. So this is a linear function, and we knew that from looking at the equation. When we look at the data, as x or t was increasing, our distance was increasing. Or if we look the other way, as our time is decreasing, our distance is decreasing. So the letters move in the same direction. We could write the equation as a linear equation, y equals kx. So k is our slope, that's our rate of change. And if we solve this equation for k, which is a constant, in this case it's the slope of the line, we would get y over x. So this is a special kind of linear function. It's referred to as a direct variation. So many times we're going to have data that we're going to collect in an experiment or some way that we'll collect the data, and we want to analyze that data. And we would might want to know, is this data a direct variation? To do that, we can look at the data in the table and calculate our y divided by x. And if we get y divided by x is a constant, then we know that our data is part of what's called a direct variation. So let's look at a, another scenario here. In this case, the distance we have to travel is fixed. So here, our distance is a fixed number. And we want to explore the relationship between our speed and our time. Now I'm going to let time be the independent variable here. So we need to solve this for the rate. So I would have to divide by time. So we get 200 divided by t. So if we had travel, if we want to complete this trip in one hour, we would have to be traveling at 200 miles per hour. I hope you have a fast car. For two hours, we would have to average 100 miles per hour. For four hours, we would have to average 
50 miles per hour. If we were willing to take 10 hours, we could drive at 20 miles per hour. If we were willing to take 20 hours, we could drive at 10 miles per hour. In this case, we can see as the time is increasing, the rate is decreasing. So the letters are going in the opposite direction. Let's look at a graph. So at 1, we are at 200 miles per hour. At 2, we would have to go 100 miles per hour. At 4, we would be going 50 miles per hour. And at 10 hours, we are at 20 miles per hour. And at 20 hours, we are at 10 miles per hour. If we wanted to do this in a half hour, we would be way up here at 400 miles per hour. Now we couldn't put zero in here because if we divide by zero, we would get infinite. So at uh, as we approach uh, zero here for the x, we're going up to infinity. And if we kept uh, taking, allowing ourselves to take longer and longer times, our rate would get smaller and smaller and it would be approaching zero. So if we look at this curve here, if we draw a curve through this, and I don't have a function on the smart board here, but let me see if we can sketch this. So as we are getting closer and closer to zero, this is approaching infinity. And as we are heading out this direction, we are starting to flatten out. So remember that would be from when we explored exponential functions and logarithmic functions. This is a horizontal asymptote. And in this case, we're approaching the y-axis. This is called a vertical asymptote. This shape here is called a hyperbolic function or hyperbolic shape. So what we've observed in this scenario our data, if we arrange a scatter plot, is in this hyperbolic shape that has our horizontal and vertical asymptotes. We also noticed as the x or the t increased, our rate decreased, so they're going in opposite directions. And when we solve the equation, we saw that we could write the equation as y equals a constant over x. And when we did the original equation, our two letters, when multiplied together, equaled a constant. Now, this particular type of relationship is another type of variation called inverse variation. So again, the letters are going in the opposite direction, so they vary inversely. If we have a set of data and we want to know, is it part of an inverse variation, we can calculate the x times y for each data in our uh, sa sample and check does it approach or equal a constant value. So let's look at some data and see if we can figure out for each of these whether or not this data is a direct variation, an inverse variation, or possibly neither. So if we look at our first sample, and let's just think about the data for a minute, x is increasing as we go down the table and y is decreasing. So it can't be a direct variation because they're not going in the same order. So we can rule out direct variation. So we need to see, is it a inverse variation? So for inverse variation, we want to calculate x times y. And we need to see, is that a constant? So if I take 1.5 times 20, I get 30. Now we have to do this for every item in the table. 2.5 times 12 is also 30. 4 times 7.5 is 30, and 5 times 6 is 30. So we got here the same value each time. So that means this is an inverse variation. And from previous notes, x times y here is a constant. That's our k. And using the model for inverse variation, we can write this as y equals k over x, and in this case k was 30. So our model for this data is y equals 30 divided by x. Let's look at our uh, second example here. x is increasing, 
y is decreasing. So it's not direct variation. It may be a inverse variation. Let's look at x times y. So here x times y is 450. And here I get 735. Those numbers are not the same. So it's not a inverse variation. And it's not a direct variation. So this one is neither. So there may be a function that we could use to model this data. There may be a relationship we could come up with, but it's not a direct or inverse variation. OK, let's look at our last sample here. x is decreasing, and y is decreasing. So the x and y's are going in the same direction. So it's not an inverse. So we know it's not an inverse. We can rule that out. But the question is, is it a direct variation? To check that, we want to calculate y divided by x. So 217 divided by 31 is 7. 140 divided by 20 is 7. 119 divided by 17 is 7. 84 divided by 12 is 7. Since we got the same number here, it is a direct variation. And from our notes before, the equation is written as a line. This is the slope of our line. It's our k. This is our k. And so our equation would be y equals 7x. So I think the most important aspects of this is how we can look at tabular data and decide is it direct or inverse variation. So if x times y is a constant, it's inverse variation. If y divided by x is a constant, we would get uh, direct variation. And if neither of those are true, x, y is not a constant here. If we calculated for this y over x, it would also not be a constant. Then we get neither. And lastly, from a graphing point of view, direct uh, inverse variations have this hyperbolic shape. And direct variations are linear functions that go through the origin. So have a great day and good luck with analyzing variations. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, oh.